Good day. I'd like to talk with you briefly about ground penetrating radar and its use in soil investigations and in agriculture. Ground penetrating radar, or GPR, is an impulse radar system that is designed to penetrate earth materials. It operates by transmitting short pulses of electromagnetic energy into the ground and measuring the time that it takes these pulses to travel from an antenna to a subsurface interface and back. In order to convert this travel time into a depth scale, either the velocity of pulse propagation or the depth to a reflector must be known. Compared with other geophysical methods, GPR provides higher resolution of subsurface features. However, the effectiveness of GPR is highly soil and interpreter dependent. Modern radar systems are well suited to soil investigations. A typical radar system consists of a control unit connected to an antenna. The control unit consists of a screen, microprocessor, and storage medium. Antennas are used to transmit and receive energy. A major constraint of GPR is the inverse relationship between exploration depth and resolution. Higher frequency antennas provide higher resolution of subsurface features, but are depth restricted. Lower frequency antennas provide greater exploration depths but poor resolution of subsurface features. The antennas most commonly used in soil investigations have center frequencies between 100 and 500 megahertz. The most common mode of GPR data acquisition is the reflection profiling mode in which the radar waves are transmitted, received, and recorded as the antenna is moved along the soil surface. As shown in this slide, energy is radiated into the ground in a conical fashion, with the footprint area of the cone expanded with increasing depth. Whenever a pulse contacts an interface separating layers with different dielectric permittivities, a portion of the energy is reflected back to the receiving antenna. The more abrupt and contrasting the dielectric permittivity is across an interface, the greater the amount of energy that is reflected back to the antenna and the greater the amplitude of the recorded signal. Dielectric permittivity governs the velocity of propagation and its contrast determines the amount of energy that is reflected back from a subsurface interface. The dielectric permittivity of soil materials is dependent on their moisture content. As shown in this table, values of dielectric permittivity range from 1 for air to 78 to 88 for water. The dielectric permittivity of dry mineral soil materials ranges from 2 to 10, while for wet mineral soil materials, it ranges from 10 to 40. However, because of its dependence on moisture content, the dielectric permittivity of soils is spatially and temporally variable. The depth of investigation is highly soil specific. Soils having high electrical conductivity rapidly attenuate radar energy, restrict penetration depths, and severely limit the effectiveness of GPR. Electrical conductivity increases with increases in water, clay, and soluble salt contents. For GPR, the depth of investigation is greatest in dry, sandy soil materials. In this example, the depth of investigation is greater than 8 meters in an area of Windsor soils, which contain less than 5% clay. The depth of investigation is restricted in wet clayey soil materials. In this example, from an area of Putnam Soils in Missouri, the depth of investigation is less than 50 centimeters. The top of a metal disc, which was buried at a depth of 40 centimeters, has been highlighted with a green line on the radar record shown on the right. This disc, which was buried at the top of the subsoil, is barely visible. The subsoil contains about 60% clay. The effectiveness and penetration depth of GPR are soil dependent. Ground penetrating radar soil suitability maps show the relative suitability of soils for GPR applications. The spatial information contained on these maps can help GPR service providers determine the relative appropriateness of using GPR in their investigations. As shown on this map, areas that are colored green and considered well suited to GPR represent only 22% of the contaminants in the United States. What are some of the uses of GPR in agriculture? Ground penetrating radar has been principally used by soil scientists as a quality control tool. 
to verify the taxonomic composition and improve the interpretations of soil map units. In this application, GPR is used to document the presence, depth, lateral extent, and variability of diagnostic subsurface horizons and features. As an example, on this radar record from an area of Pomona soils in Florida, the upper boundaries of the spodic and argillic horizons produce high amplitude reflections that can be identified and traced laterally. The varying depths to these two subsurface horizons can be used to classify the different soils along this radar traverse line. Peatlands comprise more than 50% of the global wetlands. The effective use and management of peatlands requires knowledge of the thickness, distribution, and volume of peat. Compared to traditional surveying methods, GPR is faster and requires significantly less time and effort to attain similar information. Here we see an aerial photograph, radar record, and computer simulation of the thickness of organic materials within a cranberry bog located in eastern Massachusetts. At this site, GPR data were used in the planning of a wetland restoration project that recreated the natural stream channel across this wetland. Recent emphasis on hydropedological modeling has increased the need for information on the depth and movement of water beneath soil landscapes at different spatial and temporal scales. In sandy soils, the capillary fringe is narrow, and the difference in dielectric permittivity between unsaturated and saturated soil materials is abrupt and contrasting. As a result, water tables are distinguishable on radar records collected over sandy soils. On these two radar records, the water table provides a continuous high amplitude reflector that is easy identified and traced laterally across the study areas. The use of GPR can increase the level of confidence in hydropedological site assessments and reduce the number of wells needed for water table and groundwater flow studies. A major use of GPR has been the identification and characterization of root and water restricting layers. The images on the left are from an area of Sisney soils in Illinois. The EBT horizon boundary provides a continuous subsurface interface that can be traced laterally across the radar record. This interface restricts the flow and purchase water. The images on the right are from an area of Darley soils in Louisiana. Darley soils contains layers of ironstone which where continuous, form root and water restricting layers. On the radar record in the soil profile, the ironstone appears highly fractured and discontinuous. These discontinuities provide narrow flow paths for the movement of soil water and contaminants. Ground penetrating radar has also been used for hydropedological studies at field and catchment scales. On this Google Earth image of a catchment in Pennsylvania, we see seven georeference radar traverse lines that are color coded to indicate the depth of bedrock as interpreted from the radar data. In this catchment, ground penetrating radar provided high resolution information on the depth and continuity of stratigraphic layers in the bedrock surface. Ground penetrating radar has been used to detect roots and buried organic debris, assess root size, map root distributions, and estimate root biomass. Being non-invasive and non-destructive, GPR allows repeated measurements that facilitate the study of root systems. In this example, roots as small as half a centimeter in diameter are detected at depths of less than 30 centimeters with a high frequency antenna in a well-drained sandy soil. However, root detection is ineffective in soils with high clay, water, and or rock fragment contents. Ground penetrating radar has also been used to locate buried agricultural drainage pipes. For the detection of drainage pipes, the effective use of GPR requires careful considerations of soil moisture conditions, soil texture, drainage pipe size, depth, and orientation, antenna frequency, and survey procedures. In addition, the use of advanced computer processing techniques is considered essential for the identification and mapping of buried drainage pipes. On the two images of the grid site shown in the upper right of this slide, the image on the left is a solid cube. 
The image on the right has an insect cube graphically removed to a depth of 70 centimeters to reveal two drainage pipes along its base. On the 3D display in the lower right, white arrows have been used to identify reflection hyperbolas produced by a buried drainage pipe. And a yellow segmented line has been used to indicate the general trend and orientation of this buried line. In the last 15 years, significant advancements have been made in GPR technology. Present systems are well suited to soil studies. These systems provide moderate to high resolution of subsurface features, enable the collection of larger data sets, and provide more comprehensive spatial coverage and therefore greater confidence in site assessments. The future looks bright for the expanded use of GPR in agriculture, soils, and environmental studies.